Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. St. Lucia's Prime Minister and CARICOM Chairman discusses the importance of the Caribbean Basin Initiative. St. Lucia drums of massive interest at CARIFESTA 14. The Department of Gender Relations continues to combat discrimination and violence against women and girls. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. The trade programs known collectively as the Caribbean Basin Initiative, CBI, remains important elements of U.S. economic relations with the Caribbean. The CBI is intended to facilitate the development of stable Caribbean economies by providing beneficiary countries with duty-free access to the U.S. market for most goods. The Caribbean Basin Trade Partnership Act of the trade program is scheduled to expire on September 30, 2020. Chairman of CARICOM and Prime Minister, the Honorable Alan Shastney, indicated that he has been dialoguing with U.S. Congressman Elliot Engel, Chairman of the House of Foreign Affairs Committee, on a number of initiatives, including immigration, free borders, and security, all of which, he explained, can be beneficial to the Caribbean. One of those initiatives um, is the idea of having a Florida-Caribbean conference, which we're trying to organize in December. We've gotten the support of CARICOM at our last Heads of Government meeting. Um, my my uh, ambassador is working with many of the other ambassadors from the CARICOM, as well as the state of Florida, and I can say um, uh, Congressman Engel's office, to facilitate in making sure that that meeting happens. You know, Florida is the state that benefits the most from the Caribbean, whether it's from our diaspora who live there, um, whether it's economically from flights and ships, as well as the amount of, of stuff that we purchase predominantly comes from the state of Florida. And I think that it would give us a great opportunity as heads of government in this region to ensure that at least one meeting a year. The Prime Minister added that parts of the U.S. and the Caribbean are faced with similar challenges. He explained that as a result, it is important that the U.S. and the Caribbean work together on the many issues plaguing the region. From climate change, the same hurricanes that are impacting us are impacting Florida. From a crime perspective, it's the same criminals, it's the same type of crimes. And if we can now start sharing on intelligence, for instance, you know, you take the, the Miami port, imagine how many screeners that they have. If we're now able to benefit from their volume discount and also their maintenance service, because they're only three hours away from us, it would be significantly improve the security of this country if we can scan all the containers coming into St. Lucia. You know, we're currently doing a better job with the barrels, but we need to be able to do that. If we want to eliminate illegal guns in this country, we must first start preventing them from coming in, and then secondly, being able to identify them much quicker than we currently are once they're in our country. The CBI was launched in 1983 through the Caribbean Basin Economic Recovery Act and expanded in 2000 by the U.S. Caribbean Basin Trade Partnership Act and again by the Trade Act of 2002. It was implemented on January 1, 1984 and has no set expiration date. St. Lucia is stirring quite a bit of interest at this year's Carifesta being held in Trinidad and Tobago. The contingent participated in the Parade of Nations, an official opening ceremony on Friday. More from Anissa Antoine. National delegations from 21 Caribbean countries, including St. Lucia, have converged in Trinidad and Tobago for Carifesta 14 to showcase and market their cultural and creative talents. The festival has evolved and transformed over its 46-year history and is expected to generate greater value for key stakeholders like artists, cultural entrepreneurs, host and sending governments, and the CARICOM Secretariat. A major highlight of the festival is the CARIFESTA 14 Grand Market at the Grandstand Queen's Park Savannah, where festival goers can shop, dine and lime. Drenia Frederick is the Artistic Director of Carifesta's Team St. Lucia. I think it's an investment for those persons who produce um, products and craft um, for the grand market, um, buyers and um, persons um, looking forward to buying their stuff and showing what we can produce in terms of manufacturing. 
It's also a means of networking and workshops. A lot of the performers and the contingent will be attending dance workshops, theater, like drama, the music. Um, the poetry. poets will be doing poetry readings, lectures. So it's really an exchange of that. A festival is more than just music, itemized music on a stage. It has symposiums. It has um, where we discuss issues that are related to Caribbean life. Um, where are we going? How are we ch channeling this creative industry? Frederick stated that the Parade of Nations at Queen's Park Savannah and other facets of the Carifesta 14 allows for the infusion of different cultural practices. The St. Lucia contingent has been had at rehearsals for the production entitled A Little Folk Tale, which is written by Monique Auguste and Jesse Myers. Everybody who has seen clips of the, the advertisement and we have gone around and publicized it and Kai Vesta has promoted it, persons are just looking forward to it. St. Lucia is a country to watch and of course, as you can see from the parade, how we celebrate and we have our flags and we're dancing. So it's really a festive spirit and a spirit of celebration of that otherness of being a Caribbean person today. I am extremely proud to be a St. Lucian. A Little Folk Tale will be staged at Queen's Hall in Port of Spain on Friday, August 23rd, 2019. From the Government Information Service, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. Meantime, the Parade of Nations created a festive atmosphere in the host country. We get more highlights from CARICOM News Time. The Caribbean Festival of Arts, Cairo Festa 14, starts here at the Queen's Park Savannah, where over a thousand revelers from more than 20 countries will parade through the streets of Port of Spain, Trinidad and Tobago. Representing the six ethnic uh, heritage that we have in Guyana, and um, we're hoping to display each one of them as much as we could. It's Haiti traditions, okay, and living traditions. Haiti memories and living traditions. The living traditions, we have our King Ali Christophe who's here, and his queen, and the, he, he built the biggest castle in the in, um, in, in the world, and so traditions by the way they dress traditional garb and then you can see that our dances our music everything is very lively our living traditions so we're celebrating both the home of Carnival and the home of Carifesto. You can feel the vibes, you can feel the energy in the street. 
And you've seen Dunkley Malcolm of Caragom News Time reports on the official opening ceremony. Patrons were treated to a spectacular display of elaborate performances, paying homage to the culture and customs of Caricom member states and associate members. The official aspect of the evening's proceedings included remarks from the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, Dr. the Honorable Keith Rowley, Minister of Community Development, Culture and the Arts, the Honorable Nyan Gadsby Dolly, and CARICOM Secretary General Ambassador Erwin LaRock. Prime Minister Rowley, after welcoming everyone to his country, said Carifesta could not have been better placed on the calendar of Trinidad and Tobago, as it was happening right after emancipation and just before their Independence Day celebrations. And of course, it wouldn't be a Trinbago Carifesta if all of the countries didn't cross the stage in true carnival style. The Department of Gender Relations recently conducted a three-day training for public officers from various departments on drafting national reports. Among the reports is the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. The Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women CEDAW report is submitted every four years by countries that have signed on to the convention, which places emphasis on bringing the female half of humanity into the focus of human rights concerns. St. Lucia is preparing to submit its 7th to 9th combined reports and has been hosting training exercises in preparation of these reports. The second part of a two-part exercise was recently hosted by the Department of Gender Relations through the technical support from Sisters of Change through its Equality and Justice Alliance initiative. Acting Director of the Department of Gender Relations, Janie Joseph, says the exercise focus on drafters. We are hoping that by November we are going to have a final draft that we are going to take um, to Cabinet by the 25th of November when the 16 days of activism to end gender-based violence begins for um, the Cabinet of Ministers' uh, approval. Sisters for Change is an international organization which works to combat discrimination and violence against women and girls. Legal Director Jean Gordon says its role is to help support and strengthen St. Lucia's capacity to be able to draft its report to the CEDAW Committee. The work we have been doing is identifying the data that is needed, the evidence that's needed to produce that report, to identify um, the progress that has been made in the implementation of women's rights in St. Lucia between 2006, when St. Lucia last reported, to 2019, and then working through how we will draft the final report and how that will be agreed before it is then submitted to Cabinet for um, review and approval. St. Lucia submitted its last CEDA report in 2016. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. No one ever reads the fine print. But if you use a cell phone, landline, the internet or cable TV, read the terms of the service contract carefully and pay attention to the type of service, the length of the contract, contract renewal, penalties, fees for services, termination and reconnection, fee increases and how much notice is required, the option not to receive advertisements and sharing personal information with third parties. Do not sign a contract that you are not satisfied or comfortable with. This message is brought to you as a public service announcement by Ectel, the NTRC, and this station. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports.
Thanks, Misha. Welcome once again to your segment from Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. The St. Lucia National Youth Council Executive recently visited Bellevue Vieux to aid in facilitating a leadership workshop for the youth in the Vieux North area. The workshop is part of a five-week series which is aimed at building capacity in young people. As part of the workshop, First Vice President Anya Edwin presented on the fundamentals of events management and was assisted by other members of the executive. The St. Lucian National Youth Council then held a joint meeting with the Vieux North and Vieux South Youth and Sports Councils to gain a better understanding of the issues affecting the councils as well as the youth of Vieux Additionally, solutions and possible collaborations were discussed as a remedy to these issues. The meeting was the first step as the council prepares to roll out its district branch revitalization. Among the pertinent issues facing the district youth and sports councils, which were discussed, included the lack of database for clubs and financial discrepancies during the turnover period of councils. President of the Confederation of North, Central American and Caribbean Football Associations, CONCACAF, Victor Montagliani, has lauded the initiatives taken by the government of St. Lucia and the St. Lucia Football Association in an effort to develop the sport of football on Ireland. The CONCACAF president spoke to the NTN Nightly on a recent brief visit to St. Lucia. Obviously, this facility is very impressive and the work that's being done. I also saw the plans of the government in their facility. Um, that is um, really leading edge stuff. Um, the Prime Minister uh, really um, has done some great work in his vision in, in using sport um, for the development of humanity, really, uh, in St. Lucia. And I think what uh, they're going to pull off there with that facility, uh, not only for football, but I think for other sports as well, is going to be. Um, state-of-the-art in the region and uh, so I've been very impressed uh, by my short visit here. The CONCACAF president was at the time accompanying the president of the Federation of International Football Associations FIFA Giovanni Infantino on a visit to St. Lucia, one of the stops on a tour of a number of islands affiliated to the two sporting bodies. And that's your segment from Youth Development and Sports for today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. In keeping with changes in international oil prices and government's application of the modified market pass-through petroleum pricing mechanism, the retail price of gasoline and kerosene remains unchanged. The retail price of diesel, LPG 20, 22, and 100 pound cylinders has changed. The price changes take effect from Monday, August 19, 2019. Gasoline remains unchanged at $13.95 per gallon. Kerosene remains unchanged at $8.76 per gallon. Diesel increased from $13.27 to $13.32 per gallon. The 20-pound LPG cylinder decreased from $32.54 to $32.12. The 22-pound cylinder also decreased from $36.08 to $35.61. And the 100-pound cylinder decreased from $206.54 to $204.42. The next adjustment of the retail price of fuel products will be on Monday, September 9, 2019. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arqueon. Kiniti bi estene e ben tou se, moun ki an bon sante oli wain ka wespiwe se vemin la. Moun ki pani bon tepe waman kon sa ki ni maladi HIV, akohol, kafime, ti mamay e gwa moun bien sensib pou se maladi sa la. Moun ki katou se ni pou pran pokosyon le yo an pami moun an plas publik. Kouve bouchou le o ka estene e tou se. Visite dokte ou e ben plas sante ou. Fini tout tretman yo ba ou pou sa jwen djerizon e pi maladi ti bi. An responsabilite ou, ede dou bout si men Maladi TB et HIV. Protégez Kong et les autres. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arqueon. 
Monsieur Tanisha, Monsieur Madame du département qui est responsable pour information. Le gouvernement cette ici, ça c'est GIS, ça c'est la télévision nationale NTN, qui a posé une nouvelle créole, pour cette Primus Hutchinson. Les représentatifs cette ici, pour Festin Carifesta, Jean-Ampé Trinidad et Tobago, pour participer de grand spectacle Caribla, ils ont gagné des 80 individus qui ont fait ces diverses processus présentation culturelle là et à parmi ces diverses présentations c'est fait la rose avec la, avec la masquerade et qui ont une spéciale présentation théâtre qui a porté noir et little folk tale afin ils ont une histoire folklorique premier ministre de ici on est avec Alain Chasney qui a déjà trouvé l'occasion pour un témoignage pour présentation a déclaré qu'il est bien satisfait et puis production à toute façon il a ajouté qu'il n'y a pas que cette ici Kai a festé, kai a festé là, n'est-ce pas? Kai a formé à des hauts degrés. Les considérés des degrés talents, c'est à ce sala ni directeur des affaires artistiques, Drenio Fedrick, by assurance là qui c'est aussi kai continue pour produire qualité, contribution qui y a déjà été fait avant, à l'ingé de culture et qui a fait folklorique et puis un pile succès. Fedrick déclare que là n'est-ce pas? Présentation c'est aussi à kai festé, kai a boisé y a révolution des affaires culturelles nouveaux. Et puis théâtre est aussi à façon côté y a un mélange de diverses présentations artistiques et folklore. Il y a aussi mentionné participation les jeunes et puis y a qui plus avancé et plus expérimenté qui a véritablement improuvé à son contribution cette année pour l'autre génération pour venir. Cette année a aussi trouvé l'occasion pour travailler ensemble et puis l'autre délégation a plus que 20 pays en région caribla en affaire qu'on atelier et façon des programmes du monde ça là. Spectacle Carifest a commencé vendredi passé le 16 août et Kaibout dimanche le 25 août. Le ministre de Santé, Jacques, a commencé le travail à ce plusieurs wellness centers au Liban PIA. Le centre de la FAG et de Mogouge en commune de qui était fermé depuis le 6 décembre l'année 2008 pour cet arrangement fait à sa vie à l'opération. Ça a fait un projet pour établir mais présence de l'environnement et qui ont facilité la santé qui est plus sustainable. Le travail est déjà fini à présent et ce centre est déjà ouvert et commencé à opérer depuis le 5 août 2019. Le Wellness Centre, moi, je suis fermé le 12 août pour trouver des grands assistants à ce projet. Ça là. À parmi ce travail là qui est supposé faire, c'est le changement et pour vivre et mettre cette opération en neuf. Le changement nouveau, ça là, qui a fait pour placer ces facilités santé ça là plus capable pour adresser le changement de climat. Il y a un temps ce travail ça là qui a fait le service assistant ça là, c'est ce centre ça là, qui a été trouvé à Gozile et Grand Rivière. Il y a un travail là qui a fait le service clinique et visitation aux maladies qui a été fait continuer comme des habitudes. Il y a aussi qu'à informer que tout client peut visiter n'importe l'autre wellness center du Watan. C'est travail ça là qu'a fait. Selon les autorités, le travail est supposé pour durer pour trois mois. Le ministère de la Santé a accueilli à ce public là généralement, mais particulièrement yo qui en ces communes côté travail là qu'a fait pour bailler projet ça là c'est pour yo et copier puis travail là du Watan qu'a fait. Sous quand vous devez plus information ou ça téléphone le ministère de la Santé à l'imo 458 secteur Dion. Le secrétaire permanent du ministère du de Développement économique et de la Transportation, Kai Apamelot, M. Claudia Simonwell, oui, M. le gouvernement et le peuple de la République de Chine de Taïwan pour continuer pour assister cette ci à le développement économique et social du pays. Il fait ça durant une cérémonie pour ouvrir officiellement la facilité neuf pour l'autopassager garé avec la place pour les cultivateurs et les vivadaires à souffrir. M. Emmanuel explique que Objectif projet c'est pour former une facilité qui va encourager pour les rivières improuver à sa façon pour vendre produits et aussi une place étoile pour l'autre passager garé qui va servir route souffrir. Ce que le premier a déclaré que tout travail là en tout en total coûte un haut de 3 millions de dollars. Représentatif pour souffrir, on va Harold Stanislas explique qui explique qui ça c'est un yon commencement et là, il plus de toujours pour faire. Il y a annoncé que la place souffrière qui a établi à de façon plus moderne qui était hier à présent. Parce que le cyclone, l'année, est dommagé 
et qui n'a jamais vu et trouvé ou en jeu. Il y a aussi montré côté la uh, troisième phase du projet Sala, la Cagnon Restaurant, qui est très avancé. Et qui a une boutique côté les étrangers qui a acheté toutes sortes de qualités de produits comme lotion, hard, boisson, etc. Qu'on nous a dit duty free. Officiel cérémonie a été pour le 15 août 2019. Ex monsieur madame, c'est comme ça nous avons trois nouvelles là. Mon cher monsieur, autant vous avez regardé, mon cher boyon, invitation, vous ne pouvez pas encore dire qu'on se fait la vie. Mais vous avez posé l'autre nouvelle à Kouyol. Après ça, vous avez vu et vous êtes au Nichelle. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.